September is really an important month, especially for silver. It, the resistance is a 29 and a half. The support is a 22 and a half. So I think that uh, is something really good that you can play into. And here's my strategy with it. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. And today I have Lior Gantz joining me from his home in Israel. Lior will be discussing a wide variety of silver and gold stacking topics. He's going to talk about what's happening in the markets, what to expect for the rest of the year. Guys, if you haven't heard Lior before, you are in for a real treat. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to silver and gold, both the physical and the paper markets. He is the co-founder of Gold Standard Media, the creator of the Wealth Research Group, which I enjoy reading, and has been featured on Kitco News. I am super excited to have him on with me for a second time. And all I ask is that you just poke that little like button below so others can get this interview recommended to them as well. Hi, Lior. Welcome back to Yankee Stacking. Thanks for having me. We last spoke in April of this year, yeah. and lots have happened since then, like uh, you know, inflation, the Delta variant, uh, the mini crash of precious metals in August, um, a Federal Reserve meeting at Jackson Hole. But I first want to say that I've been reading with earnest all your Wealth Research Group email alerts. They are great. They are tremendously enlightening, very well written, um, just... you. You have a real talent for uh, drawing upon your personal life to create these uh, interesting macroeconomic analogies that are, you know, so cool to read. It really makes it easy to understand what's going on, especially in the world of precious metals. So, so Thank that's you. awesome. Also, I have to say, congratulations on the exciting news that you and your wife are expecting twins. Yeah. <laughs> That's gold awesome. and silver. Yeah, gold and silver. Perfect. <laughs> uh, man, I am I am wondering how coherent you're going to be with your wealth research group emails in another six <laughs> months. So let's get into it. Gold and silver. Um, you believe September is a critical month for precious metals, don't you? September is really an important month, especially for silver. Um, and it has to do a lot with the fact that the Fed uh, makes a lot of his biggest decisions in September, uh, the September meeting. So we're, we're coming up uh, a week and a half from today's uh, recording. Uh, there's going to be a big meeting. They're probably going to talk about taper for the first time. So that's one thing. A lot of traders, especially in commodities, take July and, and August off, and they they come back to their desks in uh, you know September uh, 1st, and there's Labor Day, but effectively uh, they come back to their desks uh, mid-September. So it's that plays into it. Mm -hmm. um, and then September is the worst month for the stock market um, in the past 100 years on average. Uh, so um, you got that and, and that plays into precious metals, obviously. So there's a, there's a number of things that, you know, seasonality matters in, in precious metals and uh, September usually is a good month. For the last time we talked, you uh, explained that critical inverse correlation between the gold price and real interest rates. It was really compelling. Um, and, and I have to ask, when it comes to inflation, when it comes to uh, tapering and especially interest rates, if inflation keeps going up and interest rates are gonna lag tremendously, aren't real rates going down? And isn't that so, incredibly bullish for gold? I do think uh, that uh, the market sentiment right now just doesn't believe that inflation is going to stay uh, elevated and that the Fed will do nothing. That literally is the opportunity, right? Because mm -hmm. the, uh, you believe that something is wrong mm -hmm. and it's not priced in in the right way. Um, in the 1940s, in the uh, 1890s until the 1920s, so for 30 years, the, the, this misconception um, uh, lived and existed. There was real uh, negative yields and gold flourish for 30 years. So misconceptions can happen for a very long time on either way. Right now, I think that the markets just do not understand that this is different than 2008. In 2008, you, you did QE 
And all of that quantitative easing ended up on the balance sheets of banks and they started to, to uh, lend it back to the Fed, but it stayed, that money, that currency, it was part of the money supply, but it wasn't in circulation. So in other words, all it did was, it, it's like uh, uh, your mother telling you, look, this is your trust fund, but you can't touch it until you're 21. <laughs> well, you feel good, right? Because you know I got money when I'm 21. But right now, if you go out and, and try to buy something, you don't have the money to do it. That's how QE in 2008 was. So when the markets then were wrong, saying, look, there's going to be big inflation, it was because they didn't understand QE. They didn't understand that the money stayed within Wall Street and the banks and did not trickle to Main Street. That's why we didn't see inflation. And then by 2011, uh, that whole uh, sentiment or that whole consensus changed when we saw that even in Europe, where you have the pigs nations, which were Portugal, Greece, Ireland, um, and Spain, that did not uh, go into default, but were very close, you still didn't see the world falling apart because uh, the money supply didn't go into the main economy. This time, it's very different. We're not just seeing the inflation you know, in the stock market, but we're seeing it in the supermarket now. It's actually affecting exactly. people. Directly. Exactly. In the supermarket, you're seeing it in real estate, you're seeing it in commodities. Mm -hmm. But also, the, the main fundamental difference is we actually have increased the money supply. The money in circulation has grown tremendously. And that's because we didn't just have QE, we also had direct deposits or stimulus checks. So people now have way more money than before. Money market accounts now have over four and a half trillion dollars in cash we're flush with cash and, yes yes the millennials are spending about 760 dollars more per month than they did before march of 2020 man if the free market right now start to accelerate money velocity money velocity right now it's at the low just uh, google you know free search on google money velocity it's the lowest it's ever been if we double money velocity right now we will create a lot of inflation. And that's what I think the markets just do not understand. So we have this backdrop and it's different than before. Then you also have the Fed indicating to you that they want to see more inflation than 2%. On the CPI, what Wall Street reads and what Wall Street cares about, it, for 10 years, the Fed has told the markets, we will do everything in our power to get it to 2%, and they couldn't. <laughs> so the markets are really accustomed and addicted to thinking that technological advancements are so deflationary that nothing can create inflation in uh, the 21st century. But 2020 changed everything. We are not living in a global world right now at all. Uh, in fact, I, I went a couple of days ago to uh, several call, car dealerships because I, I need to change my, my car. And, <laughs> you need to get a now, bigger like, car, don't yeah, you? <laughs> yeah. So, and, and they tell me, look, uh, you want, if you order now, you'll get it in about four months. It's unbelievable. And it's not going away. Uh, there are shortages that are created because the supply chains are different. Uh, 2020 has changed the way that supply chains will uh, occur around the world. But I have been in business now for 19 years, since I was 18. I have employed many people, and I've never in my life cut a salary. Salaries are going up. They're not coming back down later. You may not hire a lot of people because you're saying, okay, I hired here. And right now, wages are going up. So I think the markets are misunderstanding mm -hmm. how much inflation uh, is now built in the system now you've seen already where the markets reject the Fed. In December of 2018, the Fed said we are, on, actually in September of 2018, the Fed said we are on autopilot. Every now and then we will raise another quarter percent until we normalize rates. Now, mm -hmm. normalized rates are between three and 4% if you take a 100 year average, okay? Okay, so we're nowhere near that. And here's what happened. In December, the Fed raised it to 2.25, and the markets puked 20% in one month. They literally told the Fed, that's it. 
and the Fed did what's now called the monetary U-turn. And then in June 2019, they cut rates again, and then that's when gold uh, really took off, June of 2019. We live in a world where you cannot raise rates substantially, even if you wanted to. Uh, the, the amount of money that will flood into the United States if they raise rates so much more than other uh, developed economies will be too much for the dollar to handle. So a strong dollar is, is not healthy, uh, for the, uh, a too strong of a dollar, right? Like, like we saw in 2018. That shows how weak this economy is, no matter what the government says or the Fed says, we are in deep trouble. Yeah, the, we're, we're living as a society way, way, way beyond uh, our means. We've leveraged sovereign debt to unbelievable levels. And the way that this is, this gets, uh, you know, deconstructed, it, you know, the houses will still be here. They are part, the real wealth, everything that's been built will still be there. It will just be priced differently. Everything is priced right. in a way uh, that it corresponds with this debt. The current value but, of a dollar. We're yes. going to see a dollar crisis. That's what yes. eventually we, is We're going to see a lot, of, a lot of currencies going into, into crisis. We literally just live in a world where everything in, in price-wise is inflated. And because everything is inflated and almost everything is owned by the top 1%, the system benefits the elites or the people that have a lot of assets and uh in equities and etc not everything because, is inflated though right here gold silver. Yes. um i think with gold and silver mm -hmm. um you know if we look long term since 1971 we've seen gold go from 35 to 2000 we've seen a 60 fold move in the price in the nominal price of gold in u.s dollar terms just in this century alone we've seen it go from 250 to 2000, so a 700% move in 20 years, which uh, is, by the way, better than what the NASDAQ has returned in the past 20 uh, years, and better than what the S&P 500 <laughs> has returned in the past 20 years. So uh, since April 1st, 2019, when um, Basel III was announced that it's happening, and gold was at 1291 that day, we've also seen a pretty big move, right? A 40% move. In just a in just two years or two and a half years so if the market is wrong and the economy continues to stay heated up as it is and the fed acknowledges that it will wait that is what the markets are not pricing in right now they don't believe jerome powell will not uh raise interest rates they won't believe he will be uh laid back or calm as inflation continues to print to print higher. They think he will address it immediately. And that basically is the arbitrage between where gold currently is and where gold will be. I think you will see gold trading higher than 2000. And in my view, before 2024, we will see gold at 3000. So, um, and, and that's, that's a big, big, um, difference it's a 50 percent move in fact if if you go to to our website to wealthresearch.com forward slash gold playbook we've wrote we've written an extensive report about the, uh, this whole supply chain the mining world and why this is happening it's a very comprehensive two-part report on this it's a great uh, report subject. i read it fascinating well written it was fantastic thank you it sounds like an exciting time for us to be stackers you know in the next few years we could see some massive shifts in you know the appropriate pricing of silver and gold what, what's your suggestion for precious metals stackers the stacking part is for me at least is what i'm gonna buy that i will never sell and so in the long term gold is compounding at about six percent six point six percent a year for the past 50 years so that's a pretty long time to be looking at something and how it behaves so I think that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, when you're buying right now, just think, whatever, whatever I'm buying today, in 20 years, the rate of return will probably be around 6.6% right. for gold. Um, overall, we have never seen a bull market in gold 
that ends uh, under the fiat monetary system that ends with 100% gain. And that's what we have right now. Gold bottom at, at 1,053 an ounce in December of 2015. It topped at uh, 2,067 on August 5th of uh, 2020. It's 100% move. We've never seen something as mild as this. Uh, if we analog all the previous bull markets for gold under the fiat monetary system, we've never seen something this mild. For silver, it's even worse. <laughs> it's even milder. And that is something we have never, ever seen where silver performs uh, worse than gold in a bull market. So the bull market for me is not over at all. I think that something that's interesting to keep in mind is for the past five years, um, so between 2015 and 2020, while gold and silver were appreciating, especially gold, uh, it was a dollar bull market compared to fiat currencies. And since April of 2020, we've entered a dollar bear market compared to fiat currencies. So we're in a different macroeconomic environment altogether. Um, and silver is way more correlated with gold with uh, uh, dollar weakness than gold is. So you, you have a chance to see um, silver performing a lot better. I think that we clearly see the resistance and the support for silver right now. It, the resistance is a 29 and a half. The support is a 22 and a half. So I think that uh, is something really good that you can play into. And here's my strategy with it. I am looking for a double confirmation. I'm looking for the DXY index, which is the dollar index compared to other fiat currencies, to drop to 88. Uh, 90 is the barometer between bull and bear market for uh, the dollar index. Right now, it's about 93. So if it drops... And, and by the way, it peaked at 130 in April 2020 when I, when I think uh, the dollar uh, bull market ended. Okay, so if it drops below 90, affirmatively goes to 88, algorithms will start selling it and it will be a confirmed bear market. That's confirmation number one. Confirmation number two is to see silver go above 29 and a half, beat that resistance level. I think if it does that, it goes to 36 really quickly. Uh, in about a matter of a month or two, you, you're seeing a really explosive move. So be ready with both of them. Now, you can speculate that both of them will happen and just buy silver. Or you can wait for one confirmation, let's say the DXY, or for a double confirmation. You can do this. You can go now, speculate, and just put a lesser amount because you'll make more money, right? Because uh, uh, gold is, uh, I'm sorry, silver is about 25 an ounce you're literally making that four and a half dollars to 29 and a half uh, that other people will not be making if they're waiting. On the flip side, you can take less risk, build the cash position and just go bigger with more confirmation. That's a better risk reward. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're in your life in a situation where you're able to save and build wealth right now, the letter is better if you need to take more market risk in order to generate income. In other words, if the markets is your source of income, then you're in that basket like the millennials where, where they're saying, look, I need to make money in the markets because my career is just getting started. So that's sort of the dynamics here. Uh, and for me, I think I like the other one. I like to wait and just be um, like, an like an anaconda on the riverbanks of the Amazon. Just, I don't need to eat like all the mice. And the, I, let me wait for, you know, the big, the big one. And I'll just wait. And I'll, I'll just lurk there, just anticipating, not conserving my energy, you know, just uh, staying there, and then I'll pound. So that's more of my strategy. Leor the, um, the anaconda. I like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's great. That's a great strategy. I think a lot of people that are listening to this will appreciate that. Again, it depends on where you're at in your your life and what you're able to save. Hopefully, uh, people are in good shape that they can afford to have some cash at the ready waiting for that opportunity. Again, if you can't, it doesn't hurt to just keep dollar cost averaging, keep get buying a little at a time because you believe in the next few years, we're going to see a significant change in the dollar value of these precious metals. I, I do. Uh, 
uh, like I said, I think gold is going to around 3,000 hmm. um, by 2024. And I think the gold-silver ratio is going to about 60 to 1. So that implies that I think that silver can hit 50. Right. Um, for silver, and a lot of people th- think that silver will not hit 50 because there's so much industrial demand for it that uh, the companies that need it will reject it. The, um, the problem with that theory is that the use of silver, like the actual use in each of these products is so minuscule that it doesn't really change the end product's uh, price. It, it doesn't make the companies that sell these products or make them raise prices on their customers. So that really doesn't drive the price of silver. Overall, the price of silver is really, really um, uh, affected by retail demand, by uh, people that buy silver uh, for investment purposes. That is where it's, uh, the price gets driven up. Um, and I think if you look at silver, it's the second most used commodity in the world after oil. It's the only commodity that has never uh, surpassed its 1980 nominal high. And it's the only one that's about 50% below its all-time high. It literally is uh, the unique. Un- the unloved metal. For <laughs> If you look at the 29 most, uh, uh, the 21 major commodities in the world right now, there is none just on, on these ma- matrix of uh, how much it's consumed and used plus where it is compared to its all-time high and when was its all-time high there's nothing that even uh, comes close to what silver offers. You know, a lot of people are going to probably comment that that is purely because of the manipulation going on. Um, is, is that your opinion? I think there's certainly a, a component um, there that is made up of these big eight short, uh, these eight big short positions uh, that are uh, conducted by JP Morgan and uh, the seven other uh, big shorts on silver. They definitely are uh, creating a suppression in, in the price. Uh, there's no doubt. I think in general um, that the reason that silver is at 25 rather than 35 or 40 or 45, etc., is because it's been demonetized by the central banks and governments. In other words, the central banks and governments, which do buy precious metals, only buy gold. If they were to monetize or re-monetize silver, its price would probably be double overnight. You buy silver because you think it's money. It's just that the government and the central banks do not. And that's purely out of convenience. They, they, they can just store gold much easier than they can store silver. So they rather buy gold. Uh, it's not something that has to do with uh, its utility, et cetera, right. right? They have to, okay. So, but for us, uh, for the average person, we're not uh, stacking rooms. We're stacking uh, a shelf or a, a drawer, right. right? Okay, so it's different for us. And that's why, for example, in January, when you saw a lot of attention going into silver, that's what happened. The, um, the problem that uh, the short squeeze um, faced is that it squeezed the dealers, and you saw silver going to 40 and 45, but on the spot price, on the comics, you see nothing. So what was missing is another community, not just the stackers that buy strictly physical, but the Wall Street um, uh, money and the um, institutional money that actually buys silver. And what they, the reason that they did not participate is that they don't care to squeeze the shorts. What they care is that they want to see the DXY below 90 so they can justify buying commodities, especially silver. So that's why that's the missing part. That's when you'll see uh, these this divergence that you're talking about between the, the, the really high demand for physical, uh, but not a high demand on the institutional level. Do you, think you you'll, that demand? do you think you'll be buying silver yourself, physical silver between now and the end of the year? Um, I would definitely say that if it goes to 22 and a half, I'll buy. Interesting. I did mention your wealth research group email at the top of the video. How can people that are interested tap into more of your insights? 
you know what? Um, something new that uh, between April and now happened is if you go to wealthresearchgroup.com, on the top menu, there's a new tab. It's called Live Portfolio. And you literally, if you click it, it's, it's My Portfolio, all the big caps. So anything that's over a billion, um, it, it, it's listed there. Um, include not only the, the company's name, but like the percentage of my portfolio, if I'm adding it, uh, if, if I bought more this month or decreased this month, or it's a new position, et cetera, it, it's just all laid out in there. Um, right beside that live portfolio tab, there's another one that's called watch lists. I think that's cool because it literally is all the companies that I'm looking at and the prices that I like to, to get into them. Uh, the third one up there is called special reports. That's where you find a lot of the, the gold reports. Um, and the silver reports um, that you can download and just, you know, sit down with a cup of coffee or tea or whatever you guys, uh, you know, like to do, beer, et cetera. Just sit, chill, read some good information. It's it's all of the research that I've done for the past 18 years kind of um, laid out. So I think that's cool as well. And obviously uh, the best way to just stay up to date is uh, be a subscriber like yourself to the newsletter um, to the free newsletter, because basically I think it, it helps me uh, define my, my logic better. So that's why I started the newsletter a few years ago. Was if, I, if I can take what I think and uh, people look at it and understand the logic behind it, then it probably is valuable. Well, you do a great job with it, and I will include the links you've mentioned in the description of this video. So thanks again, Leo, for joining Yankee Stacking. Have a great one. Thank you, sir.